Ghana is not invincible. Bissiger looking a million bucks. And what is Adam Yates wearing on his head? This is the UAE Tour Stage 3 TT. 9Ks, pancake flat, turnaround at 4.5Ks, tailwind out, headwind back. Mikkel Bjerg set the original good time of the day. And we just had the debate raging, maybe initiated by Chris Froome the other week, about we should be using road bikes in time trials. And Lucas Plapp, perhaps perhaps he's an acolyte of the Chris Froome YouTube channel, my colleague, started this UAE Tour TT on a road bike, just like Plapp's a really, really good time trial. You saw that in the U23s and the juniors. I presume he has some sort of technical issue with his TT bike. But what's interesting about this is we get to see in person what it looks like if a runner's trying to go full gas in a TT on a TT bike and the looking down at the ground is present the same way that it is in a TT bike and access to the brakes is not immediate either like you would be if you were in the drops. You can't brake hard there. But Benji and I discussed that whole debate in Fall on the Lantern Rouge Cycling Podcast. So we don't have time for that now because the young bull, Stefan Bissiger, incredible year last year, won Benelux Tour TT, won Paris Nice TT, won a Tour de Swiss stage on the road from the breakaway. He set an incredible time in the tailwind section, actually, and even conserved more for the headwind section coming back. They averaged like 60 k's an hour for the first half for like 4 minutes 23, 4 minutes 30, and then it was 5, 25, 17 for the last half. He set a new best time of 9.43, 24 seconds quicker than Mikkel Björk, a really, really hot time. And Bissiger is someone you need to watch out for in the Tour de France Stage 1 TT. It's a short, technical, flat, maybe windy time trial as well. And he will be gunning for that first yellow jersey along with Ganna, Mads Pedersen and co. But Ganna set off, he's won the two time trials he's done so far this year at Provence and Bessege. But, but what does that mean? Because Ganna at 90% can beat most competition at time trials like that. He went into the intermediate time check a second down on Stefan Bissiger in the tailwind section, where maybe he'd have an advantage doing more absolute watts than Stefan Bissiger into the headwind section. That must be the most demoralizing thing ever going past that Bardiani rider there. He lost another six seconds to Stefan Bissiger. So maybe Ganna's not in peak form. We saw he lost to Kung in the European Champs the week before beating Van Aert in the World Championships. He will finish second on this TT, which he won last year ahead of Bissiger, seven seconds behind him. In terms of the GC contenders, though, Alexander Vlasov maybe got his pacing strategy wrong. If you look at his time splits, he was very, very fast in the tailwind section the first half and then seemed to blow up in the latter half. Still a pretty good time from the tall Russian. Jan Hurt, we saw at Tour of Oman, absolutely destroying on Green Mountain. Incredible what's peculiar there, but it's not about what's peculiar on these flat TTs. It's about your position. And as you can see, that just that's an old school position. That's the Quintana 2013 one. So he lose 47 seconds. Almeida, the new recruit for UAE Team Emirates, would lose four seconds to Bagatcha and I think seven seconds or so to Dumoulin. A good TT from Almeida and it puts UAE in a really good position to attack. Maznada for quick step there, GC man here, not great, not terrible. But the feature of this video, Adam Yates with Darth Vader, some sort of Sith Lord helmet on his head. They've obviously tested it out and the Pock Temple people thought didn't look good, but it's fast, so who cares? Same thing with Adam Yates, riding the quickest equipment it seems possible for him because he lost like 24 seconds, 25 seconds to Bagatcha, who we see lining up, who recently said he uh, had a COVID infection. And we were like, this is the first time. Let's see how he recovers or how he has recovered from that. He looks pretty good in today's TT. Bagatcha is not always like flying and destroying in TTs. The Tour de France ones, like stage five, he beat everybody, but then in Basque Country, he wasn't as good. But yeah, Yates, he's got this praying mantis position and he lost a lot less time this year in the 9K TT. He's pretty much got his head touching his hands with that helmet and yeah, he went a lot faster. So I think Yates likely 
to be the Tour de France guy for Ineos, I'd be expected after, I mean, let's not overreact one TT. He did an okay TT, I think, in Catalonia last year, and then the Vuelta, his TT wasn't great. But you see the difference in Pagacci. He does wear gloves, which not a lot of the other guys wore. Gano doesn't wear gloves, and there's a gap between his skin suit and the gloves, and I don't know, he's, he's a beard aero, and then he's not running one by either. So maybe that he could go faster. I'm sure they'll keep working on his position. But yeah, with Bernal out, Ineos will be looking for who is going to be their Tour de France leader. Tane Pagacha, the favourite for that race, and a huge TT performance from him here, nearly breaking 10 minutes, 4 seconds into Almeida, 11 seconds into Adam Yates. But the best time trial from any of the GC contenders here was from Tom Dumoulin. He's recently, I think, spent part of the off-season in Colombia, uh, training at altitude. He was only four seconds behind Bissiger at the intermediate time check and did a really, really good time. The only GC contender to break the 10-minute mark in this 9K TT. The problem is he only got about four seconds on Pagacha and then another, and then eight seconds to Almeida. So they will be looking to put him under pressure, maybe not tomorrow on the steady Jabel Jais. On Jabel Hafit, they'll be attacking him and hoping he gets dropped. The biggest, I think, surprise of the day Jasper Philipson finished in the top 10 in this time trial. Now, apparently he's got some junior TT pedigree, but he's now a sprinter and a classics guy. Maybe it was because he had to use the organizer skin suit, which is probably faster than Alberson's skin suit. Didn't even look bothered at the finish. Incredible time. Same time as Nielsen Powell. So look out for him in the Tour de France stage one TT as well. Taking the stage, Stefan Bissiger, huge result. I think the first time he's beaten Ghana, seven seconds ahead of him and 14 seconds ahead of Tom Dumoulin. In terms of the GC gaps from Tom Dumoulin and down, you see on lanternrouge.com.au that Pagacha is the closest to Dumoulin and then and Adam Yates has put himself in a good spot. So maybe with Yates being so close, UAE will be more aggressive with their punchy Guys, uphill Almeida and Pagacha on Jabel Jais tomorrow and might look to control the breakaway. But hope you enjoy the recap. First mountaintop test at UAE tomorrow. Can't wait to see it. Ciao.